Today we're doing a helical, a super spring with helical loops. I don't do this very often. Uh, I hope it goes smoothly because I haven't done them in a while. So here's the model, and I've already reset the teeth. <clears throat> what you and I should have taken a picture of it beforehand, but these teeth are about two or three millimeters lingual. They're about probably about right here. You can see, you see how much it sticks out. This one is worse than this one, but still, it it uh, was sticking out, or or it was lingually, and I've reset them, <clears throat> built up the gum back, the gums back up with wax. And what I usually do on these spring retainers is I build the internal spring first. This part, this internal spring, I usually build that first. Uh, that way I can do my waxing and stuff. But since this one has soldered C's, we're soldering right here. If I have anything waxed out right here, which is where I usually put my wax, um, it's going to melt all that, so it'll be all lost cost. So I like to build all this first, solder it, everything, and then build my uh, spring on the inside, how it turns out. Again, if you're a Patreon, you get to see the live stream of me recording this. So I've waxed here. Now I'm, getting, I'm putting labial acrylic here, so that's going to be... Um, removed later. Now I'm going to solder this whole thing and then I'm going to take it off, clean it up, and then put it back on. So the good thing about sticky wax is this, which is this orange stuff, uh, it'll come off real easy. It'll just pick right off, especially when it's cool. Uh, so now I'm going to bend my C clasp. joint on it. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning up as much of it as I can before I tack it back on. Now I can just tack it on with sticky wax. I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, I do clean up the, any excess super glue. So again that's it as far as the prep work goes. Um, you know soldering and all that good stuff. Um, so now we work on the main part. What, what the whole beginning of this whole video was was to do a mushroom spring with helicals but I, I was telling you in this case i do if it's soldered seed i do that first so let's get started with that let me or i use 028 wire for my mushroom spring with helical loops i'm first going to bend and get my curve on the inside here and i'll put a mark distal of that two i'll put a mark in the middle between the ones and I'll put a mark distal of this two. And that'll be my landmarks for bending this. This is my jar back pliers. I like them because I can really get a tiny loop going. So I'm gonna grab it just to the right of this mark, the mark that I marked between the centrals, and I'm gonna just go straight down and grab it there. I'm going to go a little wider of a loop and then I'm just going to rotate this around I'm just going to keep going around and what I'm doing is I'm, I'm so I'm loosening, loosening my grip so it slides along let me so you can see this loosening my grip so it slides along and I'm gripping it and then bending the wire and then I'm loosening the grip and then bending the wire. Now, I usually like to make these parallel with each other. All right. Next side. And again, I try to keep these parallel with each other. And I'm going to grab here. I'm going to go straight down. 
there and one notch there we go and I'm gonna bend so at this point I'll look and see if it is even or not it looks pretty even so I'm gonna keep going so again I, I grip it bend loosen my grip slide around bend the wire loosen my grip slide around bend the wire loosen my grip slide around bend the wire and just keep doing that going around again I make my wires parallel to each other so then I have the option of bringing these closer together you can see I'm pretty much even as far as uh, I, I don't like one of these bending down one of these bending up so I got those pretty parallel now you can see if I take this you can see how just how flexible this is so you've built a lot of slack into the wire which makes it bend and give a lot easier. So I'm going to put this back on the model. So now I need to bend these down into the pallet. Let's see, I think this might be a little longer than that side. So to fix that, I'm going to grip the whole thing. I'm going to bend here. Like that. See how it now angles up, and then I'm going to bend this back, grip the whole thing, bend that back down. Okay, so now I'm going to try to maybe I use landmarks to try to keep these even. So I'm going to go in between the central and the lateral straight down and straight down and so let me bend these down into the pallet and bend this up so I can kind of get a good feel for alright so looks like I've gone too far on this one so I need to bend it in Bend this out a little and bend it back down in. One option you can do is um, get these preformed. I'm sure that would save a lot of time. And I usually don't try to capture the distal of the twos like I have here, but since we're really going to be pushing those two twos out, I really need to get them. Oop. Got to be careful with that. If you if you didn't see what happened, I just knocked off the labial bow. <laughs> Alright, let me get my labial bow back on here. Now you can see where wire management comes into effect. Um, I actually want to round this a little more in the front. So I'm just going to take my three prong.
There we go. These still seem a little long, so I'm going to clip them down just a bit. Oh, I leave a bulk ammo. See what you got to deal with? This is why I like to bend these first if I can. So that way I don't have to deal with a labial bow being there, other wires. See, now I, if you do it first, then you, you'll end up bending the, all the rest of the wires, meaning the labial bow and stuff, around your mushroom spring. I think everything is pretty much set. I just need to make my little loops, my little acrylic tags. This is where you do your own little thing. Uh, I like to just bend these in like this. So now I need to, I don't know if you can see on this angle or not. See, I need to taper those more toward the gingival. So I'm just going to torque them. Torque and torque. And we are good. Alright, so this is the finished mushroom spring. We're about to wax it, but you can see there's a lot that went on with it, and uh, let's get to waxing. So I'm putting some right on these helicals, and I'm hoping they'll drip right down onto the model. Let's see if I can get my... used to like waxing these but I did pick up a little bit of a trick I used to try to uh, wax out this bar right here but now I want that enclosed in acrylic I'm gonna wax out this bar and then as I go straight out I'm gonna go straight up it's like waxing it looks like a mustache when you're done now, I know this looks like it's sticking off of the palette pretty high but I really want this angle let's see if I can find another angle here I really want this angle straight into the teeth to go this direction toward the teeth so I always want it to try to push down so if I had it flat against the palate which is right here that thing's always going to try to raise up so now I'm waxing where I'm going to cut the acrylic and this just helps later on um, or it helps me y'all don't have to do it it just helps me to trim that acrylic easier if I already have it waxed so it makes like a little trench under the acrylic so I'm just going to sprinkle this like a regular holly And I'm trying to get, not touch that corner of that wire with the wax. So you really have to have some waxing skills when you do this. So I'm almost just drawing the wax where I want to go with it. 
building it up. Can't put, can't stack it too fast. You gotta let it cool a little bit. So I'm, I'm working at different parts building this up. I'm gonna put a lot in here. Under here. So I definitely want to cover these helicals. That's what's doing all the work. Cleaning this up, trying to make it look nice. The more work you can do in the wax, the less work you have to do in the acrylic. And for those that sprinkle these super springs and you use uh, clear acrylic right here, this actually makes a great dam so that you can use, you know, a uh, different color back here without spilling over. Again, I'm just drawing it. I did touch that wire. I need to go back and clean that up. I like to use my little Freddy Krueger knife here. Clean that up. Oh, this is the boring part. There we go. There we go. That is one weird super spring with helical loops. Again, these were set back, the laterals are set back about three to four millimeters. So this thing's really got to be able to bend backwards. And uh, so you got to actually wax. I forgot to add that when I'm doing the waxing. You need to add a little bit of buffer back behind this so those coils can be pulled back so we're building this to ideal so this will already be activated when they put it in the mouth because remember the teeth these teeth are about three millimeters back so they're going to pull this thing back and insert the retainer hopefully these soldered c's are going to be enough i think they are going to be uh this but it's what the doctor usually i would add as many clasps as possible with something like this so that it, it, it'll stay in while these, this mushroom spring pushes forward onto the thing. So that's it. If you're watching the recording of this that we're gonna put on YouTube, uh, you could actually, if you're a Patreon subscriber, check in your, log into your Patreon account and you'll be able to see the whole live stream, at, the full explanation of what I'm doing and why I'm doing things. So, uh, so hope you enjoy this. I hope it was um, educational. <laughs> as much as possible. And uh, anyway, have a good day. Happy bending.